In fact, I think like initially the Democrats said we're not even going to bring up Russia here because he's going to he yesterday went to the uh, House or the Senate Intelligence Committee. Tomorrow he goes to the House Intelligence Committee. These are closed door sessions. They weren't going to bring up any uh, Russia stuff, but the, the Republicans wanted to uh, ostensibly to, um, I guess, to exonerate the president. Um, the. Do we have. OK, yeah, this is the most interesting part. We're going to start and not quite at the uh, at the beginning, because to me, in terms of the, the concept of of collusion and whatnot. It has always been. um you know, my assessment that to the extent that any collusion happened that they weren't aware of it or this and that, I think, that, you know, over time I've become a little bit more convinced of that they maybe had a little bit more of a sense of what was going on, of who they were dealing with. But, and, and one of the things that I had said over and over again during the campaign was my genuine belief that Donald Trump did not want to win, was not running to win, didn't think he was going to win. And... Michael Cohen um, basically confirmed that with his testimony. But what also becomes interesting here is that in some ways it makes the idea of collusion, whatever that means, but uh, the idea that Trump was working, was aware of what the Russians were doing and was encouraging it and there was a quid pro quo involved here. In some ways, it makes it, in my mind, a little bit more likely because in some ways it reduces the stakes. Instead of it being like, you're going to help me become president and I'm going to be a nefarious agent for you, it's going to be, I'm going to carry your water with some things and I'm not going to be president. I'm just going to own a building <laughs> for a hundred, you know, several hundred million dollars. That to me is a much more likely scenario than someone being a Manchurian candidate. It's just him doing another corrupt business deal, which, in fact, is something that he basically had done in New York real estate for decades. Decades. Here is uh, Michael Cohen uh, saying, this is clip number three, that um, oh yeah, Trump just ran as a marketing exercise. Donald Trump is a man who ran for office to make his brand great, not to make our country great. He had no desire or intention to lead this nation only to market himself and to build his wealth and power. Mr. Trump would often say, this campaign was going to be the greatest infomercial in political history. He never expected to win the primary. He never expected to win the general election. The campaign for him was always a marketing opportunity. And so the campaign's a marketing opportunity, and this is from his prepared opening statement. The campaign's a marketing uh, opportunity, and later in the, um, in the hearing, he talks about he would do anything to win. And, it, and it, it's, it was a little bit unclear in the way that he phrased it, but I think what he was saying was that winning was not winning the election. Winning was getting this multi-hundred million dollar deal for this building in Moscow. And so that's, I think, what they were talking about when they were saying winning. And when you think about it in those terms, like, yeah, of course, Trump. I mean, remember, Flynn uh, lied uh, because about uh, his dealings with I think it was Turkey because they didn't think they were going to win. And so that this just becomes like, you know, completely transactional. It's overperform so you don't lose in an embarrassing way and then cash in exactly. across the board. I mean, we don't this is we don't even we're not even talking about the Emirati and Saudi stuff right. and the Israeli stuff. I mean, it's open shop for everyone. And this is also just a way more outsized and stupid and overt and less legalized form of, you know, basically what happens across the board anyways. Right. right. And he didn't need to do any of this stuff to be rich. Right. Like Trump was a rich kid, but he wasn't so, a billionaire. He's I, never been a well, real billionaire. And I do think that there's a psychology of is also, this is the opportunity of maybe actually getting like he knows he's lying about his earnings 
So I think he, there's some psychological need to actually get there. Yeah, but it's not driven by any rational material need, right? It's yeah, like once you get past, I've always been driven by. I'm like, totally rational. When driven, rich girls get caught shoplifting, you know, well, it's a little bit thrilling for them. Need. But is there any is there any amount of money over? I don't know. I mean, I I don't know what that figure is, but I assume it's got to be somewhere between ten and fifty million dollars. Where like every dollar after that is just. I'm never going to see it. Well, there's actually studies from Sweden Correct. on your mental, what mental well-being, and you really only need about 100K to feel good with your life. That's uh, 70, needs, I think. But no, is. no, 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 fake news. All right. Well, it's actually $55 million a quarter. Here's, here's how... You're just um, not materially satisfied. Here's how Cohen uh, answered, um, uh, opened his uh, testimony today by basically saying, and this... this um, this theme of him saying that he's ashamed has been incredibly effective in uh, dealing with the uh, Republicans. And I got to say, the Republicans are not good at this. They're just simply not good at this um, or this this crew. You of know, them. one person pointed out actually on Twitter, which might be true. I mean, in addition to them also just being unlikable and ridiculous and stupid and, and bringing up, you know, we'll get into it. But I think the other problem they're having is that they have they they have to be so careful about how they implicate him in lying and crimes without bringing Trump into right. it. Because it's always on behalf of Trump. That's another right. they get needle thread. they have to thread. Right. They have to thread a needle. But the, the, the hardest thing they have is that he is seemingly holding back nothing and he is uh, ex assuming all responsibility and that gives you very little oxygen to sort of like you know, start this and so this is indicative of where he went with this I am ashamed that I chose to take part in concealing Mr. Trump's illicit acts rather than listening to my own conscience I am ashamed because I know what Mr. Trump is he is a racist, he is a con man, and he is a cheat. Now, you know, throughout this, some, at one point, and it may just be that he got in trouble, or it's unclear to me exactly what the impetus was, but I do know that this is a guy whose kids go to a private school on the Upper West Side in New York. Um, I know people who know people who are in those social circles. And um, it's quite possible that the vast majority of people that he's surrounded with are just like, really? And at one point he just found it easier. He, he just like looked at his kids and said like, they're going to have an easier time of this. I think that's if true. If I go out and change this way because I'm already screwed. And so this is the best I can do. I mean, I also think that people, and maybe this is kind of a New York thing, but like, I'm not saying it's right, but I think that people sometimes underestimate the difference and it's showing up in the hearing because Republicans are like, oh, well, if he was so sleazy and it was just about money and, you know, why did you work for him in his real estate empire? And it's like, well, there's a pretty big difference in some people's minds, like like the difference between a Michael Cohen and a complete sociopath like Donald Trump is maybe it's like fun and games when we're doing real estate hustles. But maybe I actually do have a certain conscience about occupying the Oval Office. And, you know, he keeps mentioning Charlottesville, which is interesting. No one follows up on. Well, parents, I think that really parents, apparently we're well, all saying I think it actually affect. I mean, well, contrast that with Mnuchin and who's and Cohen. I and mean, Co yeah. I mean, they you know, they they did a little back channel pontificating. Right. Cohen had to at the very least felt pressure to, you know, uh, to put out there that he was troubled. Right. Uh, I think this actually affected this guy. Yeah. Um,